Hey, Tim Sykes here. I hope you're having a good weekend. Remember, uh, the stock market is closed tomorrow on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. Um, so, you know, study up, spend time with friends or family, whatever you can do. Um, but do not waste any day right now, okay? I, I, I really want you to maximize whether you're, um, you know, just enjoying life, whether you're studying, whether you're trading. Um, I really want you to start taking it day by day and saying, what can I do to maximize today? Actually, leave a comment underneath this video um, saying, I will maximize every day. And there's no one right answer for everybody watching this. Um, but especially for traders, every single day matters right now in this kind of crazy bubble market. Um, and that's why I'm doing this video lesson on a Sunday. Um, even though the market is closed tomorrow, I mean, hopefully... I can help show you um, that, you know, there are tons and tons of plays right now because of plays like VDRM, um, you know, which goes from two tenths of a penny up to, you know, seven cents a share in basically uh, a day and a half of trading. Um, in case you don't, you know, keep track at home or in case you're not great at math, I mean, that is 30 times your money in a day and a half. That does not happen. In all markets and you know the thing is trading a billion shares so it's hugely liquid there's a lot of people say oh penny stocks go up and down but it's so tough to get in and out and I'm like what are you looking at the volume is insane the volatility is insane maximize every day even if you're not trading at least watch crazy plays like this so that you can you know remember it and you can start saying oh okay this is how a stock goes up exponentially you know this is what the price action looks like even if you get a partial execution, even if you sell too soon, even if you have maybe the wrong broker and you can't even trade this. I see people, you know, who just ignore um, the fact that I use E-Trade and interactive brokers. And I've heard all kinds of different brokers, many of which don't even allow trading in hot OTC plays uh, like VDRM, which I think is a mistake. Um, just the past three days alone, I've made a little over $40,000. Um, and I, I want to go over, you know, a lot of these trades. I think there's so much that you can learn from your good trades, from your bad trades, everything in between. Review, review, review. That's how I'm maximizing. Um, and that's how, you know, most of my top students are really, you know, maximizing this market because they've just discovered what works best for them. Uh, here's Mr. Bean. You can see him in the challenge chat room. Uh, 14K on the week, 19K on the month. Uh, Matt Monaco, who I'm actually going to hang out with in the next few days. I'm excited. Um, he finished the week up 67000 on the week. And I'm just showing you a few students just to inspire you to show you what's possible. Never forget that 90, maybe 95% of traders lose. But I think it's good to learn from those of us who are not losing. You know, what are we doing? What are we uh, trading that's, that's led to such crazy profits? Matt Monaco, remember, just graduated college last year um, when we did the 30-day boot camp together, which, by the way, you know, you should be watching and re-watching. I'll post a link to it underneath this video. Um, but when he graduated college, um, you know, last, what, May, I think he'd only made like 50000 Now... You know, 67,000 this week. Um, and the 50,000, I think, was like over two and a half or three years since he became my student. Um, now he's making 67K in a week. Uh, in December, that was his first $200,000 plus month. Uh, and November, I think, was his first $100,000 plus month. Um, I, you know, I might be off a, a little bit on, on some of the dates or some of the, the dollar amounts. So, don't expect me to be like 100% right all the time with, with everyone. I'm just trying to keep up. But I want you to understand that this is not a normal market. That's why I want you to maximize every single day. And think about it like that. Every single day there's something to learn um, or trade or, you know, you can take a day off and just enjoy life. Um, you know, don't take life for granted as the world has shown lately. Uh, John Papa also in challenge chat. Uh, Papa John is his username. Uh, 14k um, on the week also got to give props to these two guys this was us um, taking a trip a, a few months ago and by the way I don't own this jet some people are like oh do you own this jet no I donate all of my trading profits to charity okay um, I don't have that much um, specific money to use you know for crazy luxuries I just chartered the jet I think it was like uh, 
I want to say like 26 or 28,000. And some people ask, well, if you donate all your profits to charity, how do you have money to charter a jet? I donate my trading profits to charity. My main business is teaching. If I really was so interested in, you know, maximizing this number, right? That's 42,000. If I didn't make all these watch lists, if I didn't focus on video lessons like this, if I wasn't freaking typing and taking my attention away from the trades, like, you know, right when I'm in the trade so that people can learn in real time, who knows what I could do if I wasn't trading with a damn small account too. Um, we'll get into that in this video. So I don't want you to think that I'm optimized for trading. I'm optimized for teaching and I'm very proud of that. And that is why, frankly, it benefits you the most. I don't think any other trader on this planet is as optimized for teaching as I am. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why, you know, my students are, are doing so well, or at least those who are dedicated. Um, Kyle Williams, first $100,000 plus week props to him closing in on a million in profits jack kellogg crazy i my bad i thought that he had made one hundred and fifty thousand on the week he en actually ended up making around two hundred thirty thousand on the week and they do you know monthly recaps so you can see what they're doing you know we're not just like highlighting oh look how much money we make we go trade by trade um and it's pretty freaking awesome uh jack you know my latest millionaire student i went up to new hampshire just a few weeks ago to celebrate him crossing a million and now he's I think we're at what, like 2.4, 2.5? It's, it's insane. Um, and he's just maximized it. You know, same patterns as always, just scaling everything up. Um, and, you know, again, 42000 for me in a few days. I mean, this is near best case scenario. I've never really been one to scale up. I, I wouldn't say like, oh, I'm, I'm giving everything up for my students. Like, I'm a better teacher than I am trader. You have to know what you're good at and what you're not good at. Um but VDRM, I really nailed. I, I I truly, 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 truly nailed it so many different ways. Um, I pushed myself to buy it um, right here in the beginning on this breakout. Um, or actually, I got it on a little bit of a dip um, off the highs. Um, and, you know, this was just an amazing late day run up. I sold it. I bought and sold it, I think, twice, maybe three times. I don't even remember exactly. But I was buying... Um, a stock already up 500%, you know, and, and that's crazy to buy a stock up 500% in a different market. Um, but OTCs have been running um, and I nailed this, you know, right into this. Um, and it was actually pretty beautiful. Um, I started my small account challenge uh, this past week. You know, I, every year I, I start one account with $12,000, uh, 12,415 to be exact. And I held this one overnight. Um, you know, just a, a, a small, or actually, no, this wasn't even in the small account challenge, but I did hold this one overnight. I'm sorry. I got confused. Like I said, I'm not going to be perfect. There's so many freaking trades going on. Um, cause I was, I was about to say, I was like, wait a minute, that's, that's a little too risky for my small account challenge. I took a small position overnight, but it was not in my small account challenge. And I'll specifically denote, um, you know, when I'm making a trade, it'll say small account challenge. Um, I held, what was the other first green day overnight? Uh, not TLSS, not ASTI, not AITX. I don't know. I'll check in a second. But it wasn't this one. But I did hold this one overnight, and I took a small position with my big account. There's so many different ways that you can slice and dice, right? Like I have a, a rather sizable account that I'm trading with, but I didn't want to take a huge position overnight. But I did want to try a little bit. A lot of this is testing. So I think I had, uh, I want to say like 175,000 shares overnight, which sounds like a lot, but it's really just, you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, where was my overnight trade? Uh, I did a lot of them. It wasn't even on my list of, uh, oh, this was it. Um, overnight. So I, you know, I, I specifically did not say uh, small account challenge. Um, so I, I want you to understand, you know, this was a small 177,000 shares. Um, and I held it overnight. People ask me, why am I holding a stock up so much overnight? I think it finished up like 900% on the day. It was something crazy, but I had underestimated it twice or maybe even three times. Um, and when you underestimate a stock, I mean, it, it, it tells you that you're on the right track in this hot market. You, I think that it's okay to push it a little bit. I just didn't want to take too much size. In hindsight, you know, I could have had, you know, a million, two million, three million shares because it really spiked. But very similar 
uh, to first Green Day breakouts on SFOR and TSNP, which both went supernova uh, with massive volume uh, a few weeks ago. But this one actually faded um, pretty quickly, too. I did better uh, on a dollar basis, uh, dollar profit wise, you know, on the dip buy. Um, and, and this was probably my best dip buy, um, really just just capturing it, um, uh, you know, on that that crazy morning panic. Um, you know, it, it, it jumped all the way. I, I did not participate at all from this, this, uh, the four to seven. So I missed like the best spike, but then I got it on this dip here at four and it bounced up to five. So this was my little, you know, dip by, um, and, and that was it for me. I just need this kind of volatility, right? Like on Friday there was, I, I tried to also dip by it too, and there just was no bounce. So I got out for, for puny gains. Um, but I, I prefer crazy volatility like this. So if you ever look on message boards, you know, promoters are like, Sykes is shorting this. I'm never shorting. I haven't shorted any stock in months and I would never short a seven cent stock. Even in, you know, my most aggressive trading of short selling, I don't think I ever shorted a four, five, six, seven cent stock. Um, promoters like to lie because they, they try to discredit me because they don't want people you know, trading and, and selling these things into strength. They want newbies to just hold and hope and to buy into the whole BS. Um, and, you know, again, you're, you're welcome to do whatever you want, but I'm always going to uh, promote selling into strength and expecting the worst out of these companies. That way you don't go down the tubes. I know some people where they're like, you know, people have already said, Tim, you should have held longer because I, frankly, I did miss this big spike, but now look at it. Now it's back down to the ones. And I know a lot of people who are buying it here in the fours and they were not selling it in the high fours like I was. They, they were like, give it more time. It's going to go to the sevens. And now a day later, it's down to the ones. And, you know, for all I know, this is going to go under a penny again. You cannot hold and hope on these plays. Okay. Another play I underestimated, MGTI, um, you know, uh, where was it? I think it was right here this was actually going back last week and i did not hold it over um overnight you know i had my last sell uh, at 13 cents and i think my last buy was buying it not my last one but you know i was trading these dips but on the way up uh i was buying it around 10 and selling it around 13. it closed at at 15 ish i actually thought that it could gap up to 20. i thought that i was playing it way too safe but mgti is really related to bitcoin um, and you know, Bitcoin trades over the weekend and Bitcoin was down over the weekend. So this one had a massive gap down, but then Bitcoin came back and this one came back. Um, so this is just great volatility too. I actually nailed this dip buy. Um, this was one of my best, um, dip buys. Let me show you that real quick of all my trades. Um, where was it? Bigger panic, bigger. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, I nailed it in the 16. So this was actually my best dip buy on MGTI. Um, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm looking for like these crazy runners like VDRM, um, either buying on a dip off the highs looking for a breakout or buying, you know, first green day looking for a gap up a morning spike or buying the morning panic the next day. All of this comes out of my, you know, seven step framework. If you've seen my penny stocking framework guide or penny stocking part de, um, these are all classic you know, three, four, five, six patterns. Um, so I, I highly encourage you to study that. Um, this was a classic, you know, number four intraday crash from 26 down to 16. I actually tried it um, twice. I actually was a little too early. The first uh, dip by around right here, around 20 cents, it kind of did a stutter step, but I luckily, not even luckily, skillfully exited um, when it couldn't bounce much. And then I nailed it. I, I absolutely nailed the bottom here. Um, and I didn't know that it was going to bounce from 16 to, to 26. I mean, this doesn't look like much on the chart, but this is like 60, 70 percent bounce intraday. Um, and that's just crazy. You know, it, it's had a few more dips and a few more bounces, but nothing as good as that first crack. So I look for that, you know, big crack for the dip buy. Um, and, you know, look at this. This was one of my biggest winners of the week. And, you know, I took some size because I, I like the big crack, but... <laughs> that was just a terrible exit. I said, now that's a better bounce. Phew, I won't get greedy, solid the winner. So with this one, if you were following along, you know, I, I was a little too early at 0.20. Um, and then 
you know, I took pride in nailing the bottom, but because I was so early, um, it kind of made me think like, whoa, am I, am I a little too aggressive on this? Um, and so that kind of made me too conservative on this trade. So even though this looks good, like, you know, nearly $3,000 profit nailing the bottom, um, I, I overcompensated for my earlier trade, which was a mistake. Um, so I, I can do better on that. Um, probably uh, a really good one now to go over. I'm trying to think of like the best lessons. Um, I want to talk about oh, this one. This one was another one where it, again, looks like a good trade, roughly three grand profit. Um, I just got greedy. Like it was just like, you know, I said, LOL. Like my exit comments are like, LOL. Uh, just unreal opportunity everywhere. Trying to stay humble singles add up. And I, I absolutely nailed the bottom here. TLSS. Um, again, this is one that, that kind of frustrated me on the way up. Um, I was buying the breakout right in here and I got basically chewed out cause it was just like a chop fest. And it, this was so frustrating. I did not participate at all into this. I, I underestimated it. So when I'm buying a breakout, if I'm not like right and I'm like, wait a minute, like I'm, I'm totally off. That makes me rethink my entire thesis as opposed to, you know, VDRM where it, it confirmed my thesis and it actually showed that I was underestimating it a few times in a row. Um, TLSS, very different. So I missed this huge run up because I got faked out into this mess. And then... You know, I, I didn't even want to buy dip by the first dip because I'm like, no, this one's choppy. It comes up. I mean, the first dip actually was a decent bounce from six, seven up to the eights. If you want to, you know, get in right near the market open. But this second dip, I absolutely nailed the bottom because it was right back at this chop fest. So even though this chop fest kind of made me too conservative and I missed out on this and I missed out on this, I did remember what it would trade like. And this is why I'm saying maximize every day because even though I totally miss these opportunities having the experience here um, helped me understand how much support there would be in the low fives and that gave me the confidence to re-enter um, with a lot of size I mean I, I took some serious size here because I was like oh I remember you know the low fives and frankly it bounced so perfectly and I was just shocked at how quickly it bounced. And I was just, I was literally laughing out loud. Like I, you know, I don't normally type LOL. Um, I was laughing out loud how perfect it bounced. And I had this massive position for me, at least. Um, and so I, I got in, the, you know, the low fives and out here in the, what was my exit? Like the mid fives. And literally, I mean, five minutes later, it goes to six. So this could have been a double profit. And then it goes to seven. So this could have been, coulda, woulda, shoulda been much more. I don't think I would ever really hold it until seven. You know, it's nice to see that I was so on the right track and that there was such a, a I mean, this is a 40% bounce. Um, but at best, I would have held it till six. But still, you know, this this roughly $3,000 profit could have been, coulda, woulda, shoulda been a, a six or $7,000 profit. And if you talk to Jack or Kyle or Matt Monaco or, you know, Tim Gratani, like any of my top students who are uh, really becoming, you know, the students turn masters, um, or especially Mark Crook too, where they have these solid profits and they're like, no, I could have done better. And then, you know, you're, you, I, I mean, even me, I mean, I, I grew up in a middle-class neighborhood. Like I'm still grateful for the ability to make three grand, um, on a trade like this, but all of my top students are always not satisfied. Um, which is good and bad. I mean, it's, you know, you want to kind of like smack them and just be like, yo, be happy. You just made three grand in a few minutes, like be grateful. Uh, but at the same time, then you see more opportunity and you realize like we won't always have this bubble market. So you want to try to do better. Um, and on this one, I really could have done better. I was just, it's so tough when, you know, your thesis works out so perfectly like, you know, some of these trades, you're just like, wow, I wish all trades could be so easy. And then some trades, like the last time I traded TLSS in here, I mean, I I bought it, I, I tried to add, I tried to be patient, and it just wasn't doing anything. And then right into like the last five minutes when I had no position, it started uptrending perfectly. I was just so mentally frustrated. Um, you know, some trades are going to be like that. And so some of you guys are messaging me like, oh, I had this trade, it's frustrating. Oh, I had this trade. I had a loss. Like, yeah, welcome to trading. 
I've been doing this 20 plus years just because I've studied a lot, just because I have a lot of experience. That doesn't mean like, you know, I'm immune to a choppy stock. Welcome to trading. And this is, again, going back to the beginning of this video where I say maximize every day. Even though I was very frustrated by this chop fest and it made me miss out on a lot of opportunities, but uh, even the run up here is choppy. Um, being there really helped me make more money here. And I really controlled this. You know, I, I, I don't even remember if I had a gain or a loss. I remember being very, very frustrated, but it was a small gain or a small loss. It was basically a scratch. And because I witnessed how much support there was like right you know just over five that gave me the ability to buy with confidence and size which actually turned out to be you know a, a bottom with 40 percent upside potential um so every trade whether you're chopped out and frustrated whether you nail it too easily and then you know you could have held longer whether you take the meat of the move um every trade goes to your education okay but these are just the wins let's start analyzing some of uh the losses too let's see if i'm doing this right this should go to my losses you can sort by your gains your losses there we go um and then this is interesting because a lot of people trade these plays and i see some of the swings that you guys have and i'm thinking to myself like you know even though i'm trading for charity so it's I'm a little different than other people and I'm, you know, typing out my whole alerts. Like when you're entering a trade, you're not trading for charity, at least most people, and you're not having to type things. But I look at the dollar gains and the dollar losses that I have. And I look at the dollar gains and the dollar losses that other people have. And I'm like, I know people don't have millions in the bank. And, and yet why do they have such crazy, you know, losses? Like not necessarily like, you know, account killing or confidence killing losses, but like bigger losses than me. And it just makes no sense because I'm trying to show you how conservative it's good to be, right? Like, look, literally, these are my losses the past three days. That's it. Three losses over three days, and they're each a few hundred, and this was like 30 bucks. This was basically just commissions. And I actually, AITX is one I totally underestimated. Um, this this play, even though I had a loss, I was dead on in my thesis. I just didn't have patience because, again, this one was a choppy one. AITX, I think, turned out to be the single biggest percent winner in the entire market. Um, and I got chopped out, you know, right near, uh, where was it? This wasn't on Friday. I didn't have it. Uh, this was on Wednesday. Um, so I was too early right in here. I was buying this little warning spike right here and it was so frustrating. And I was like, all these other plays are running. Why can't this one run? And what turned out was I was just, you know, two days too early before the big run now up to five. Um, so that a lot of people would get angry like, oh, you had a loss. You sold too soon. You're so stupid. Like newbies like to rip on each other or themselves. I'm encouraged by the fact that this thesis was 100% dead on. I was just too early in my timing. Um, so I don't mind this loss. And frankly, I mean, had I held all day, it just would have dropped more. So if I didn't exit basically break even, I would have had a bigger loss. I very rarely am I going to hold a stock overnight that, that closes so weakly. Um, and then, you know, this was probably a nice breakout, this late day breakout. Um, so. You know, I'm looking for morning breakouts. Sometimes the best breakouts, though, are afternoon breakouts. And this was a nice afternoon breakout. Um, but again, even if I had bought this breakout here at 3-2, and there's no way I would have made it to the fours or the fives. I would have sold it here probably in the three sixes, three fives, three sixes, and made my 10% because it dropped right here. So even if you say, okay, you know, you're early, you could, you could buy it right there. I still know myself because these plays are so choppy. So I recognize that I'm not gonna do great on choppy stocks. Um, and the same, you know, with, with CLWD. I mean, this one, so frustrating. Um, I really wanted, I mean, I, I wanted, and the market just didn't care what I wanted. I wanted, you know, a, a nice um, dip and in, in bounce. And this was, uh, you know, on Thursday, and I was buying this. I mean, CLWD is one of the biggest winners in the market up from 
um, eight tenths of a penny up to 20 cents. So like 25 times your money in a few days, not quite as much or as fast as VDRM, but still pretty freaking crazy. Um, and I saw this, you know, pre-market, it was up to like 21, but right when the market opened, I mean, this was like 18, 17 and it was dropping fast. And I got this little panic right in here. Um, actually, no, I was right, right here, um, in the 12s. And I, I wisely did not want this one. So I, I feel good about missing this little false uh, bottom. Um, but I, I was getting in here at 12 and it turned out I was still too soon. Um, so I, I had an exit. Um, I think Jack was in the challenge chat room laughing at me saying that I was too early and he turned out to be right. But again, I, I took a, a small loss um, and it actually did bottom in here in the tens. Um, I rebought it in the tens. I think I had a small gain, um, but I didn't give it time. And Jack uh, did better. You know, you can go, you challenge students, you have access to all the archives. Um, so it's kind of cool to to look through the archive chat and see what we were all doing to see who was right and wrong. And Jack was, uh, I think his entry, I want to say it was 10-3. In um, my entry, I believe, I don't know, it was somewhere in this chop fest. This was very similar to TLSS where I just got chopped out. And I was like, I'm done with it. Um, and then it bounced pretty nicely from 10. I think Jack said he thought that it could go to 13, but I think he held it from like the 10s to the 12s. And it actually went all the way to 15. So even though Jack was right, you know, he he underestimated the bounce too. But sometimes you're going to get these double bottom bounces. It's not necessarily a, a perfect panic like I prefer. I like the perfect panics and the perfect bounces. So I got chopped out of this one. And then also on Friday, I was nailing this dip buy. Um, I tried it actually a few times. I tried to buy it here in the low tens, um, thinking that, you know, it was, it was, it, there was no true panic, but it looked like sellers were a little exhausted, um, uh, but it just couldn't bounce. So I got out and then I nailed the bottom in here in the low nines, but it was just so choppy in here in the mid nines. And I was like, screw it. Uh, let me out. And I got out in the, the high nines. Um, and then it goes all the way to nearly 12. So I underestimated that a little bit, but you know, Small losses are not the end of the world. And this one I should mention, you know, uh, E-Trade would not let me sell into the bounce. I, I had my orders, um, you know, this this did bounce a little bit, but I just, I frankly could not get out. And it was so, it was just annoying. It was frustrating. So sometimes that happens. Um, and then AITX, this was another uh, another one where I, I, I tried the breakout. Um, this was actually... Uh, Friday, uh, Friday, I, I had it early in the morning too. So I was, I was speculating AITX could run and I was buying it on this spike because I also felt a little FOMO from missing out before I was buying it on the spike. I was like, let's see how it can go. But as you can see, it was all choppy all day. And this turned out to be a better afternoon breakout. Um, very similar to Thursday, Thursday and Friday afternoon breakouts. Um, and then some people are like, why am I not long AITX over the weekend? Again, um, you know, fool me once, fool me twice. Like I, I, I bought this twice for morning spikes, both times it failed. Um, you know, just the past few days have taught me that it likes to spike and break out in the afternoon. So, um, I kind of wanted just to de-stress, you know, as my brain was kind of mush uh, at the end of the week. I mean, I'm filming this on the, on the weekend. Now I've gotten a little more sleep. It doesn't look like this was, you know, very rough. You're like, shut up, Tim. You made 42 grand. You only had three losses. But even the wins, like, you know, it, nothing really came as easy as VDRM. VDRM was a freaking dream. I wish all plays could be like that, but not all plays can go up 30 times in two days. Um the rest of the plays, and I think a lot of traders are saying this, even though you know we're making money, this week, the second week of January was a lot harder than the, the first week of January and a lot harder than, than December. So recognize that we got a little choppy. I think maybe the, the market is just a little tired. I'm exhausted. I know a lot of traders are burnt out. So um, you know, I'll keep taking it trade by trade. I'll keep trying to do my best, but this is how I like to think about this. I don't just analyze, oh, this was my biggest win. That was perfect. This is my biggest loss. That was terrible. I'm looking at what I could have done better. I'm, I'm looking at what the stock is trying to tell me, like with AITX, where it likes to break out in the afternoon. Um, and I'm just trying to, again, going back to the beginning of this video lesson, maximize every day. 
I'm trying to earn, obviously, because I like donating to charity and I want to donate more. You know, these $40,000 that's going to build between two and three schools in Bali. Um, my goal is to build a thousand plus schools. So that's good. But aside from just trying to um, earn as much as I can, you know, so I can donate it all for charity um, and, and show you guys the process. Um, I'm trying to learn from every single day, from every single trade. Everything teaches me. I'm trying to learn what works best for me. I'm trying to learn what works best in the market, in the current market, and I'm always trying to adapt. There's two moving targets. What works best for you? What works best in the market? And in an ideal world, you find what works best for you, and then it overlaps with what's working best in the market, and that's how you know you rise above the, the industry stats of 90% plus of, of people losing. Um, but it doesn't always work out that way, right? Sometimes you might like morning spikes and you only get afternoon breakouts. Sometimes you like, um, you know, perfect morning panics, uh, and then you don't get a perfect morning panic. You get these choppy morning panics. Sometimes, you know, you nail a play like VDRM and then you underestimate it because you were so dead on, or, you know, you nail a play like TLSS, like with my dip buy. And because you're so dead on, like it just comes too easy. You, you freak out and you exit too quickly. Um, there's so many different nuances, right? Like a, a lot of people are like, Oh, Tim, you just buy and show. like they try to simplify it. Promoters like to try to make people think this is so black and white. Like I call AITX a pump because there's so many different promoters who have been pumping it. And then everyone's like, how dare you rip on this company? This is a real company with real products. And I'm like, I don't care about any of that. I'm trading the stock. I'm not investing in the company. I'm not feeding into the promoter BS. I'm trying to focus on the patterns and the price action. And I'm trying to get in tune with the market and get in tune with what works best for me. This is how all of this goes. You know, so again, I, I encourage you to maximize every day. Leave a comment underneath saying I will maximize every day. Um, review your trades. Don't feel bad if you mess up. Don't feel bad if you're trading small. Don't feel bad if you're paper trading. Um, this is not black and white. The promoters are not going to tell you um, what, what actually matters because it's their job just to try to get these stocks as high as possible and it does not benefit them when you have traders going in and out of the place, which I think is actually probably a better um, risk reward strategy than ever believing these, these promoter BS hypes. Cause you know, if you just believe in these things, like, yeah, you might hold on to some of them and, and, you know, catch a, a really big runner. But if you believe in them, you usually go down with the ship too. Um, so, all I'm trying to get you to understand is that it's good to ride the hype, but just never believe it. Um, and while you're riding that hype, learn from how to ride it, um, you know, in a way that's comfortable for you. It's not about how much money you can make on any one trade. It's not about how much money you can make the quickest. Okay. Um, successful trading is all about what can you learn the quickest? What can you learn in one day, one week, one month, one year? two years, three years. So by year five, year seven, year 10, Tim Grittani is closing in on a decade, you know, since joining my challenge of May, uh, what, 2011. So three months from now, and he's made roughly 14 million. Now he is an outlier. Don't you ever think that, you know, well, Tim Grittani made 14 million in 10 years. So can I, you can, it's not impossible as Tim Grittani proves, but it's also not probable. You know, he's arguably the best penny stock trader in the world. So you have to have the proper expectations. And this is a marathon, not a sprint. I'm proud to show you all my losses. I'm proud to show you how well I control them. I'm proud to show you when I screw up, when I'm too aggressive, when I'm not aggressive enough. Um, there's so many nuances to being a successful trader. Um, and you can be successful one day, one week, and then the next day or the next week, you just you feel lost. So it's always trying to get in tune with yourself and with the market. And I can't encourage you enough, um, really like, you know, Matt Monaco, um, right here to, uh, you know, watch this 30 day boot camp. Um, this is so, so, so important here. Um, that's, that's probably the best overview we have. Um, and you know, obviously if you're in the challenge, I'll post a link to the challenge. Just look at what, you know, people like Matt Monaco, Jack Kellogg, John Pop, and I are doing. Don't follow alerts from anybody. 
but learn the process, learn from what's working for us and what's not working. Um, and that way you, you know, you can try to take a little something from each trader and apply it to your own trading. Anyways, leave a comment below, say I will maximize every day and enjoy the day off uh, tomorrow and I'll see you in chat on Tuesday.